hold to God's unchanging hand. Amen, amen. We welcome you this morning to the broadcast here at the Mount Lebanon Baptist Church. We're located at 1141 Campus Stella Road in the beautiful city of Norfolk. And we praise God this morning for another wonderful day. We do realize that it's he who has made us and not we ourselves. As the psalmist would say that we are his people and the sheep of his pasture. We've entered into these gates with thanksgiving and unto his courts with praise. We will be thankful unto him and bless his name. Why? Because the Lord is good. His mercy is everlasting and his truth endureth unto all generation. We are so grateful that he has blessed us once again that we can come to you this morning live by Facebook once again. And if you're watching by Facebook right now, we thank you for being a part of our worship experience. Or if you're going to be watching later by YouTube, we thank you also for just watching on this day. But we do realize that God has blessed us once again and that we can come and worship him in spirit and in truth. As a matter of fact, if he woke you up this morning and if he started you on your way, you ought to just take the time to just to give him a little praise this morning because the Bible says praise is comely and he deserves our praise. I don't know about you, but I think I ought to praise him for somebody else who don't want to praise him this morning. I think I ought to just lift my hands up this morning for somebody who don't want to lift their hands up. I think I just want to shout right now for somebody that don't know how to shout this morning just to let God know that we are grateful, that we are thankful, that we are alive, and that he blessed us through the storm and the rain on this week. And we are so grateful. Come on, join us as we pray this morning, as we invite God here into this sanctuary. And you invite him into your sanctuary, wherever you are this morning. Our God and our Father, we do thank you again uh, for the privilege that you have provided for us once again, as well as an opportunity to come and worship you in spirit and in truth. We thank you for all that you have done, for how you watched over us, how you've kept us, how you've provided for us, and how you have made a way out of no way. And you still been, have been the God of our salvation. And we just want to take this time this morning to say thank you for being the God of whom you are. And so we ask this morning that you would just come Holy Spirit and be with us here in our worship experience once again. For we realize that we cannot have church unless you come. So, Holy Spirit, you are invited here in this place. You're welcome here in this place. And we pray that you would just use us in a mighty way on this day. We thank you for all that you have done, but we're going to thank you in advance for what you are about to do. And so we praise your name right now. We give you glory. We give you honor. We give you praise. For there's nobody like you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen and amen. We're going to take a little praise break right here, and, and we're going to do a little bit of this is the day. So we can come on praise right where we are. This is the day that the Lord has made.
amen, just a little praise break, just to give God some praise. Uh, by way of announcements this morning, we just want to say thank you to the members of our church family who were so grateful in supporting uh, the McCoy family in the home going of Sister Gladys McCoy. And we do thank you for those who participated and those who came uh, to say farewell to Sister Gladys McCoy on Thursday. And we do want to also announce that the home going for her son, Freddie McCoy, would be on Tuesday at 11 a.m. at Albert Horton's um, Veteran, Veteran Cemetery over in Suffolk. want to say thank you for members of our church family who were so kind to all this week to pray for our Brother Patrick. Brother Patrick had surgery on Thursday, understanding he's doing, he's doing well, uh, but we ask that you continue to pray for, pray for Patrick. I want to also ask that we continue to pray for Sister Mary Wiggins. Sister Wiggins uh, is now in rehab. She's out of the hospital. She's in rehab. And so we ask that you pray for Sister Wiggins and also pray for Brother Wiggins who needs surgery. Uh, so we want to pray, pray for Brother Wiggins also. Also this morning, we want to lift up the Harris family for one of our former members, Brother Raymond Harris, passed on last week. And we ask in that you would just pray for Pray for the Harris family. And there are many of us who are going through things right now, and we all, are, as my grandmama would say, stand in the need of prayer. We all need, need prayer, so we ought to pray for one another as we go through this time in which we are living right now. And just on a way of a high note, we want to say that on yesterday it was Sister Mary Wiggins' birthday. I think uh, I'll, I'll say it since she, she's not here. She can't fuss at me. She's not here. I think she was 93 years old on yesterday. <laughs> Amen. That's a blessing. That's a blessing. So, Sister Wiggins, we want to say happy birthday to you as you celebrated on yesterday, even though you weren't home with your boo. But you were able still to, you're still alive, and God is still blessing you. And also, we want to say happy birthday again to Sister Shirley. Shirley's birthday was on yesterday. Amen. Amen. God bless you, Sister Shirley, hey, for another, another birthday and another time being able to be able to celebrate. How good, how great is our God. For he's so wonderful and so marvelous and how he continues to bless us over and over and over again. Let me also take the time to say thank you to the members of our church family who have been so faithful in your giving, in supporting the church, and we just want to say thank you for however you're giving, whether you're giving uh, online, whether you're giving uh, by mailing it in, or whether you're giving by bringing it to the church. We want to say thank you so kindly uh, for how you have continued to give because to keep the ongoing work of the church going here at Mount Lebanon Baptist Church and we just want to say thank you for that. Um, we will be working on the roof here shortly, so we'll give you some more information on that as soon as we get everything in line for that. So we'll let everybody know uh, what's going on. Amen. Amen. It's time that we prepare our hearts this morning for the word of God. As we listen to music now, right there where you are, make that your sanctuary once again. Make that your altar. Uh, that you can prepare yourselves to hear the word of God. This morning, the word comes from Judges chapter 4. Uh, the judge by the name of Deborah. We're going to talk about her this morning. We'll hear music now, and then we will come back this morning with the word. Amen. Of who 
give you glory because you deserve it and I give you praise oh because I owe it and I trust and I Pray with me now. Father, thank you now again for another privilege that you've given me to stand behind this sacred desk. Come Holy Spirit, come Heavenly Dove with your quickening power and breathe on these cold hearts of ours. And let me speak the words that you have placed in my mind and in my heart today. Not that I be glorified or be lifted up, but Jesus, but you be glorified and that you be lifted up. I'm only the vessel availing myself to be used by you. Speak through my lips now. Think through my mind. Love with my heart. Work with my hands. That I may do thy blessed will. Let now the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart, let it be acceptable in thy sight. For you are my strength and you are my redeemer. In Jesus' name, amen. From Judges chapter 4, I will begin reading at verse number 1 of this morning. Judges, the book of Judges, chapter number four. We'll begin reading at verse one number one. I'm reading from the New King James Version this morning. Hear the words of the Lord. When Ehu was dead, the children of Israel again did evil in the sight of the Lord. So the Lord sold them into the hand of Jabin, king of Canaan, who reigned in Hazar. The commander of his army was Sisera who dwelt in Harosheth, Hagon. And the children of Israel cried out to the Lord, for Jabin had 900 chariots of iron, and for 20 years he had harshly oppressed the children of Israel. Now Deborah, a prophetess, the wife of Lepidah, was judging Israel at that time. And she would sit under the palm tree of Deborah between Ramah and Bethel in the mountains of Ephraim. And the children of Israel came up to her for judgment. And then she sent and called for Barak, the son of Abinim uh, from Kadesh in Naphtali, and said to him, Has not the Lord God of Israel commanded, Go and deploy troops at Mount Tabor, Take with you 10,000 men of the sons of Naphtali and of the sons of Zebulun, and against you I will deploy Sisera, the commander of Jabin's army, with his chariots and his multitude at the river Kishon. 
and I will deliver him into your hand. And Barak said to her, If you will go with me, then I will go. But if you will not go with me, I will not go. So she said, I will surely go with you. And nevertheless, there will be no glory for you in the journey you are taking. For the Lord will sell Sisera into the hands of a woman. And then Deborah rose and went with Barak to Kadesh. You may take your seats. Amen. Praise God for the reading of the word. I want to talk this morning just for a little while from the subject, the dream lives. The dream lives. On last week, history was made again here in the United States of America because of Democratic candidate for presidency, former Vice President Joe Biden selected Senator Kamala Harris to be his running mate for the 2020 presidency of the United States. Here it is that Joe Biden, the former vice president who serves under an African-American president, our first African-American president, has now began to run for the presidency of the United States of America, and he selects a female African-American, Asian-American woman to be his running mate. Look at this, because here it is that when we look at history, we, we do understand that God is still doing new things. When we look at the lives of all of us, we understand that there is nothing that God can't do. But God is calling us and requiring that we believe and trust in him. We don't understand what he's doing because of so much that's happening in and around us but we do realize that God is still doing new and great things. Here it is, a young woman raised in Oakland, has now risen up now to become the running mate, running for the presidency of the United States of America as vice president. She was just a girl, a little girl. She probably got a little bird's eye view of the civil rights movement. She saw in her sights some examples of individuals who encouraged her along the way. She probably saw a little bit of a fellow by the name of Thurgood Marshall. Probably got a glimpse of Constance Baker Motley. And probably got a little glimpse of Charles Hamilton Houston. All of these individuals uh, Kamala probably learned from to help to shape her character to let her know that if you can dream, and that there's nothing that's impossible when you dream. And here she is now, has taken her life and has put her life on the line many times out in California to try to be a life advocate for those who are less fortunate. And here it is uh, this morning. We want to tell you that the dream still lives. What, what dream are you talking about this morning, preacher? We're talking about the dreams of Dr. Martin Luther King, Jr. When, when, he, when he preached that day and he spoke that day and he said, I have a dream. And, but he even said that I, I may not get there with you, but, but we all will get to the promised land. He said, I've been to the mountaintop and I've seen the promised land. Well, if we notice that when we look back a little bit, we, we see that part of us getting our dream to come true is that we saw it in 2008. We saw it when Barack Obama became the president of the United States of America. And nobody even thought that he would probably become the president because so often we look at ourselves and we say, not yet. We say it's too soon, but, but we say it can't be, but, but we cannot say what will not be or, or when the time is when God says the time is now. When God says this is my servant in whom I am well pleased, God steps out and uses the servant. He only calls us to be believers and to trust in him. Well, this morning, when I think about Kamala Harris, coming forward, I, I believe that Dr. King was probably hearing the words of the song that says, climb every mountain, 
ford every stream, follow every rainbow till you find your dream. A dream that will need all the love that you can give every day of your life for as long as you live. You see, we are climbing to the mountain, up the mountain, and we are fording the streams. Well, what does that really mean today, preacher? What, what does it mean that, that, that we are climbing the mountain and we are fording the stream? That, that, that simply means that, that we are pressing our way, and many of us have a call on our lives. And, and that call on our lives gives you your direction. It, it points you to where you are trying to go or where you are trying to get there. And, and when the Lord puts his hands on you and the Lord calls you, that that calling is only to point you in the direction in where he's trying to get you to. But whenever you have a calling on your life and you're going in the direction that God wants you to go, you have to be sure that, that your calling matches your conduct, priest preacher, that your calling matches your conduct. You, you see, your conduct has, has to be marked by discipline, that, that even though the fight and the struggle may be great. I, my, my conduct says that, that I still have to understand who called me to be in the fight that I'm in. Can I preach for a little while this morning? Well, I want to tell somebody today that when the Lord calls you and gives you the direction in which you ought to go, you ought to be sure your conduct matches the calling that he has called you to be upon and understand that you got to have some discipline because the road will get rough. And the going will get tough and the hills may be hard to climb, but you got to make up your mind that it's not me who called myself. It's God who has called me and it's God that has developed me and given me the conduct in which I need to go forward to where he's trying to get me to. But hold on, Shirley, because I got some, I got some news and it ain't too good. And, and part of it that's not too good is that when God calls you, and even though your conduct it may be in place, may be where it ought to be, but you got to be sure and, and very sure to know this one thing about your calling and your conduct, you will have conflict. Preach, Bobby. You, you will have conflict. In other words, I want to tell you, you will have some opposition that's going to come against you. Well, Dan Sutherland in his book called Transitioning says, the greatest difficulty with opposition is that it will discourage you and cause you to doubt your vision. Can I say it again for you? Sutherland says, the greatest difficulty with opposition is that it will discourage you and cause you to doubt your vision. In other words, what Sutherland says to you today, that, that when opposition comes to you, the opposition comes to discourage you, to make you think that you can't get to where God has called you to be. And, and when you have opposition to come up against you, you got to understand who called you. And you didn't call yourself to this, and, and therefore he knew the opposition was going to come, so he has to prepare you for the opposition that comes your way. And if God calls you when opposition comes, he will make sure your conduct will be able to stand the opposition that comes your way. Can I tell somebody today that you got to stand flat foot every now and then? You got to hold your head up, straighten your back up, and open up your mouth to tell the devil you are a lie, and I got my foot on your head where it ought to be and this morning you ought to tell somebody I know where he's called me to be I know what he's called me to do and I'm going the direction he wants me to go and when I go there the opposition may come you might as well come on devil because you got a fight on your hand because I know who called me and I know who holds my hand well well our position our, our, our position now is to pray for our sister, Kamala Harris. Our, our position now is not only to pray for our sister, but our position also is to vote for our sister. Our position now is also that not only we pray for her and vote for her, but we got to encourage our sister because the opposition has already started weighing in on her to discourage her. And every now and then when the opposition comes to discourage you, 
If you're not standing on, on a sure foundation, it, it'll shake your foundation and cause you to, to even doubt what God has called. But if God has called her for such a time as this, God knows how to lift her up. God knows how to hold her. God knows who to surround her with in order for her to get through the fight that she's going to have to endure. Well, come with me to the text this morning because here is a bad sister by the name of Deborah. De 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 Deborah now becomes the fourth judge of Israel. And here it is that Deborah has only seen males in front of her as judges. And she, she's, she's seen the lights of Othniel, Ehu, Sham God. And, and now she becomes the one whom God has called now to lead. But sadly, as the story is, is told, Jabin, the king of Canaan, has have harsh, harshly oppressed the children of Israel for 20 long years. She, she's watched as, as Jabin, the king of Canaan, has oppressed the children of Israel for 20 long years. Kind of sounds like our story, don't it? Being oppressed for 400 long years. But, but we got to understand today that, yes, we may be oppressed. Yes, we may have been pressed down, but, but sometimes, but sometimes in the midst of us being pressed, sometimes while God allows the enemy to press us down, all he's doing is just shaking us together to get us a little close to one another. That when he raised us up, we all going to come up together because we ain't going to come up by ourselves, but no, because we are so closely pressed down together because the enemy has pressed us down. We are now shaken together and God will raise us up together because the enemy has pressed us down. Well, here it is this morning. Deborah has watched Jabin, the king of Canaan, oppress the children of Israel for 20 long years. Well, well, this sister, like Kamala Harris, got something to prove. <laughs> this sister, Deborah, like Kamala Harris, got something to prove. Well, what, what is she trying to prove, preacher? Well, well, she's trying to prove in the words of the godfather of soul, James Brown. I know it's a man's world, but it wouldn't be nothing without a woman and a girl. I'm sorry I had to throw that in for you this morning. But, but that, that's what Deborah has to prove this morning. That, that yes, I know it's been a man's world because all Israel has had what was male leaders. But you got to understand that, that we are God's children. And God knows who to raise up for the time in which God is calling us to be. And here it is, Deborah now is on the stage. It's her time right now. And she's a woman that, that dream. And she's been dreaming big because God is now using them. You see, a woman can dream and drive. A woman can stand and strive. But you got to understand, it's a fight that you got to be in, in the midst of your dream while you are driving, in the midst of your stance while you are thriving. Well, if it's a fight, Pastor, how do we get through the fight? How we get through, through, through the fight? Because you got to understand, when, when, when you come up against opposition and opposition is fighting you, how, how are you going to come through the fight? How are you going to come through the fight? Well, the question I want to ask this morning is, what, what do you need in, in the fight to be successful? What does Deborah need in the midst of her fight this morning to be successful? What does Kamala Harris, Kamala Harris need to be in the fight to be successful. Let me give you a few things. I'll be out your way this morning. Now, number one, what, what, what she needs this morning in, in the fight to be successful, she, she needs wisdom about the fight. Pray with me now. She needs wisdom about the fight. Well, where do you get wisdom, Shirley? Uh, James, in James 1 and 5, says, if anyone likes wisdom, let him ask God who gives generously to all without reproach and it will be given to him. Th that's how, that's what the Bible says that if, if you like wisdom, you ought to ask God for it. A and when you get wisdom in the midst of, of your fight, you, you, uh, you got to understand that, that, that in, in your fight, sometimes what you got to do is you got to learn how to check out the opposition. 
<laughs> you got to check out the opposition. You see, you, you see most, most folks who play sports, sports teams know that, that, that when you are going to play against the opposition, what you ought to do is get you a scout. Get, get you a scout and send the scout out to scout the opposition and then come back and then make your plans of how you're going to attack the opposition. Everybody understands that in, in, in sports because when, when, you, when they go to play each other, they've already scouted you out. They, they already know most of your plays. That They already know most of all your signals because they scouted you out. And, and good wisdom ought to tell you that when, you are, when you're in a fight, you ought to scout your opponent out. And here it is that Deborah is judged. And right there in verse number four, not only does it say she's a judge, but verse four says she's a prophetess. <laughs> She's a prophetess. Uh, in other words, a, a prophet or a prophet is one who gets their word from the Lord who has called them. And, and wisdom, when you got wisdom, when, when you are leading, wisdom when leading knows that a key leadership principle is collaboration. It's collaboration. In, in, in other words, wh wh while I'm leading, I, Reverend Ross, I, I don't need to just try to lead by myself. I'm better off when I get somebody else to collaborate with me. In other words, when I get a partner to come along with me. You see, the power of collaboration is the ability to do things in connection with others that you could not have done all by yourself. The Bible says in, in Deuteronomy 32 and 30, it says one can chase a thousand, but two can put 10,000 to flight. In other words, what the Bible says to us today, that you are not trying to do it by yourself because which but you by yourself can only get a little bit done. But when you get somebody else to partner up with you, you can do a whole lot with somebody else. And so Deborah calls Barack and says, come on to the fight because it's time for us to fight. But we got to understand that I've got some wisdom because the Lord has already spoken to me about the fight that we're going to be in. Can I tell somebody this morning before I go to point number two is that when you get the wisdom that God has given you, God will give you the wisdom all and tell you all about your enemy. He'll tell you where to go, when to go, how to go, where to be at, when to be there. You got to understand that that's what wisdom is all about. It's knowing what you are in and when you are in this thing, you got to lean on God and stop leaning on yourself. Ah, how you going to be successful? First of all, number one is you got to have wisdom about the fight. But, but then, number two, how are you going to be successful? You, you, you need the wardrobe for the fight. <laughs> you, you, you need the wardrobe for the fight. You have to know what to put on when you're going to fight. In verses 6 and 7, the, the text says that, 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 that Deborah says, Has not the Lord, the God of Israel, commanded you, Go gather your men at Mount Tabor, Take 10,000 from the people of Naphtali and from the people of Zebulun, and I will draw out Cicero, the general of Jabin's army, to meet you by the river Kishon with his chariots and his troops, and I will give him into your hand. We understand this. If God has already given us his instructions for the fight, then I know what to wear to the fight. <laughs> If God has already given me the instructions for the fight, then, then I know what to wear to the fight. Uh, I, I got to understand that I got to learn how to lean on God and listen to what God says. Because the Lord had spoken to Deborah and had given Deborah this word uh, about Jabin's about Jabin's army. Second Samuel 22 and 31 says God, his, perf his way is perfect. The word of the Lord proves true. He is a shield to all those who take refuge in him. You got to understand that, that when the Lord gives you the word, all, all you got to do is go ahead and prepare yourself the way the Lord says you ought to prepare yourself. You don't need to take too much. No, too much is going to weigh you down. You don't need to take too less. No, too less won't get you there. You got to take baby girl just what the Lord says take with you because the Lord knows what you need to have on for the fight that you are in. You got to understand that a long time ago when, when the boys were in the street 
with us. And, and when the boys were in the street and they were getting ready to get in a fight, if, if you know that, that, that you weigh 200 pounds and the boy you getting ready to fight don't, don't weigh but a buck 15, you don't need to call your brother for that fight. No, no, no. You can take care of him all by yourself. But you got to understand that, that when you win the buck 15 and he win 200 pounds, you better call your brother and have him to come with you to be in the fight. I stopped by to tell somebody that the fight will go on, but you got to know what you need to wear while you are in the fight. And God has already given the instructions to, 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 to Deborah to let Deborah know about this fight. That's why 2 Chronicles 20 and 15 says, the battle is not yours, it's the Lord. And if the battle is the Lord, that means the Lord is going to fight the fight for you and you ain't even got a fight. Is there somebody here this morning want to tell somebody I've been in some fights and I ain't even had to put my dukes up. I've been in some fights and I ain't even had to make an ugly face. I've been in some fights and I didn't even have to even try to act like I'm bad. I was in a fight and I act like I was glad because I knew the Lord was going to fight the fight for me because the battle was already won. So here it is, Deborah, De 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 Deborah says, De Deborah says, here's what the Lord is going to do. And so, so Deborah understands, she, she knows with the wisdom that God has given her about the fight and the wardrobe that God has given her, that De God has given in the fight, to the fight, for the fight, Deborah knows now that ain't but one other thing we need, Reverend Ross. If we got wisdom about the fight and, and we've got the wardrobe for the fight, all we need now is the weapons in the fight. Preach, boy. All, all, we now, all we need now is the weapons in the fight. Well, what, what I'm using, I need to know what I'm using in the fight. Uh, in verse 8, Barak says to Deborah, I, I, I'll go, but, but I, I ain't going unless you go with me. <laughs> he said, listen, I, I, I'm going, Deborah, but, but I, ain't, I, don't, I ain't going uh, unless you go with me. You, you see, sometimes that even with the Lord's promise, we, we may feel like we need somebody to go with us. We, we don't always need somebody to fight for us or fight along with us. We just need somebody to go with us. Just the assurance that I got somebody with me. That, that, that's why every now and then when I think about that, I, I think about Paul because Paul every now and then would take Silas with him. I look at James. James sometimes took John with him. I look at Ruth. Ruth needed a Naomi. I look at Moses. Moses needed an Aaron. Well, what do, do you need them to participate in the fight? No, you don't need to participate in the fight. You just need them to be there by your side. Every now and then, we just need the assurance that we've got somebody by our side. And that's what I like about the Lord because the Lord will give me the assurance that when nobody else is around me, he'll be right there by my side. You don't see him with me, but he's got my back. He's got me on the left side. He's got me on the right side. As a matter of fact, he's in front of me fighting a battle for me. All I got to do is show up for the fight. I don't need nobody to fight with me. Just come on and go with me to the fight and watch me as, as I let God fight the fight for me. So here it is today. What, 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 what we need, we need the weapons in the fight. Well, Barack just needed somebody to be with him wanted Deborah to be there with him because Barack understood that teamwork makes the dream work. Teamwork makes the dream work. Well, what kind of weapons do we need for this fight? Well, if the Lord has already said that he's already going to give us the victory, we got to understand the weapons that we need in the fight. Well, 2 Corinthians 10, 4 and 5 says, for the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds, casting down images, and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God and brings into captivity every thought to the obedience of God. In other words, what I need for the fight, I don't need to take any knives. I don't need to take any guns. I don't need to take any swords. I don't need to take any weapon because this is not a physical battle. 
this is a spiritual fight that, that we are in. And all I got to do is show up armored with the armor that he has given me to armor myself with. Got to understand today that in the midst of all of this that, I, that I'm, I'm not in the fight by myself. I've got somebody with me. For God is with me. Well, well where, where is God in the fight this morning? I want you to know this morning that God is your source today. I, I didn't say resource. I said God is your source. In other words, you see a resource, a thing that you have along with you. But God is, when I say God is your source, the source is the one that does the work all for, work all for you. And God is our source today. And I want to tell somebody that the Bible said that God said, I will deliver them into your hands. Well, what are you talking about, pastor? You got to understand today that Deborah understood that the fight was already fixed. Deborah understood that the battle was already fought because God was a source. God was the one that was going to fight the battle for them. And I stopped by to tell somebody today that, that when you come into the battle, stop trying to fight with the stuff that you brought to the fight. But no, just stand still and see the salvation of the Lord and watch God fight the battle for you. Too often we let our mouths get in the way and we say things that we ought not to say because we are trying to fight the battle for, by ourselves. But no, God ain't called you to fight the battle by yourself. God has called you to let him fight your battle. All you got to do is stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. I've been in a whole lot of fights and sometimes some Negroes thought that they were going to take me out but all I did was just stand still and watch the salvation of the Lord. Had I opened up my mouth I would have messed everything up but I got to understand today and I want to tell somebody sometimes when you just stand there and just look at the enemy and just keep your mouth closed the enemy will be confused because the enemy can't can't understand what silence means if you just look at him sometimes. My daddy had a way of sometimes all he did was just look at us. He ain't say a word. He ain't even move. Act like he won't even breathe it. But all he did was look at us. And because he looked at us and we couldn't figure out the look and what the silence meant, we got quiet and just stood there because that's what God will do for you. God will stand there and just let you stand still and he'll fight the battle for you because no weapon formed against you shall prosper when the Lord fights the battle for you. I stop by to tell somebody God is your source but I got one more thing to tell you if God is your source but God is also your sustainer God will sustain you when the flood waters rise God will sustain you when the wind starts blowing God will sustain you when hell has get on your trail he'll sustain you he'll hold you up on every leaning side how you know pastor I know because on a hill called Calvary, one Friday afternoon, they hung a man named Jesus on an old rugged cross, and they thought they had him, but they buried him in a barrel too. But on the third day morning, he got up with all power in his hand. I stopped by to tell you, he's your sword. He'll lift you up. He'll sustain you. He'll hold you that the dream can come forward and the dream will live. The dream will live. So in the fight that we have in America, I want to tell somebody, the dream ain't dead, y'all. The dream is alive. And we just got to be sure that we hold him up, lift him up, because he's our source and he's our sustainer to take us to the mountaintop that we see the promised land, that there will be justice, there will be equality, there will be freedom for all and all and all. God bless you today. May heaven smile upon you. But know today that you heard it from Mount Lebanon Baptist Church today. That the dream still lives. The dream is alive. And we shall get to the promised land. 
we get to the promise and we're going to get there together because we are pressed together on every side with God holding us up and leading us every step of the way. If you've been watching the broadcast this morning and you don't know Jesus, the source of your strength, I invite you this morning to get to know him. I'm giving you the invitation right now that you can accept him to make him the source of your life, that you can accept him to be the sustainer of your life, that he knows how to keep you going when everybody else try to tear you down. He wants to come into your life today. Well, how do I accept him, preacher? All you have to do is confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead. And the Bible says you shall be saved. But with the mouth, confession is made. With the heart, man believeth unto righteousness. So if you confess this morning and you believe, you are saved. If you repent of your sins and give your heart to Jesus, he'll come and live on the inside of you. Is that you, my brother? That's you, my sister. I, I pray this morning that you now have a, I, I tell you this morning, you have a, now have a new start. And in your new start and in your new walk, you're going to have a fight. Don't let nobody fool you to tell you that all you got to do is get saved and everything's going to be all right. That's the biggest lie from hell that anybody ever told you. No, the fight now starts because the devil lost a soul that he thought he had. And because he wants to get you back. But you got to understand that you can hold on to his hands. And he'll fight your battles for you if you just stand still and let him fight for you. Amen. I pray that if you heard the broadcast this morning, just click on that, that you like us here at Mount Lebanon. Let it tag us this morning. Make a comment out there so we can communicate with you because we want you to be a part of us here at Mount Lebanon Baptist Church. Thank you so much for being a part of us on this morning. and We pray God's blessing upon you. If you want to give, you can give to our church. You can come by. And you can drop it off. You can mail it in at 1141 Campus Stella Road. Norfolk 23523, or you can go online. Go online and just go over to resources and click on that and drop down to donation, and you can give. You can make a one-time donation, or you can make a continuous donation. That's, very, that's up to you. But we pray that you would bless God on this day. Amen? Amen. Praise God for you today. And I pray this day, this day that you have a wonderful day and that you would have a marvelous week. And you ought to just tell somebody when you meet them along the way, something good is going to happen to you this way. Because Jesus of Nazareth is coming your way. Amen, amen. Pray with me now. Father, we thank you now for your word. The words are lamp unto our feet, it's a light unto our pathway. We pray that we will hide your words in our heart, that we might not sin against thee. We ask now that you will lead us and guide us as we walk this pilgrim journey. God, that you will continue to hold our hands and that we know that when you hold our hands, we will be free. We will make it to the top of the mountain, to the promised land, as Dr. King said. Thank you now for what you've done, but we praise you in advance for what you're about to do. Lead us and guide us on this pilgrim journey that we may do thy blessed will. In Jesus' precious name. Now may the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord with his confidence upon you and give you peace through Jesus Christ our Lord we pray. Amen, amen, and amen. Enjoy your week. God bless you.